Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the 2006 film uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, which is currently streaming on the Shudder streaming service for horror, all things horror. If you don't have Shudder at the moment, please drop everything and go get Shudder. Not because they're paying me or anything, because they're not. I just really like it, and it's cheap for what you're getting, to be honest. But this is about Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Now, this is a 2006 film, like I said. I believe that I saw it not long after it originally came out. I am pretty sure it never got a theatrical release. It was just a two-DVD at that point. Um, and I think it has a Blu-ray Blue, uh, Blue release now, although I don't have it currently. I just have it on DVD. But I was able to watch it on Shutter, so better quality, which was nice. Um... So it was written and directed by a, a man by the name of Scott Glosserman, who actually hasn't done a whole lot else film-wise. Uh, the biggest name in this film, obviously, is Robert England, who has a relatively substantial role, substantial-ish role, for a big name in a small film like this, I will say. Kane Hodder shows up briefly. Um, I forget her name at the moment, but the woman who is in Poltergeist, who has the very distinctive voice, and she's short. Um, I'm pretty sure she's not alive anymore. I think she passed away some years ago. But she is in that as well and does a good job. Excuse me. Jeez. Um, I thought Robert England was pretty solid in his role. He didn't have a ton of speaking lines, but what he did in the film I thought was cool. Also, just to have him in it because this is a film that's about slashers. It's it's kind of a meta slasher film in a sense, but I'll get more into that in a little bit. The film is actually supposed to have taken place in Maryland, the events of it. I actually live in Maryland, so I was like, oh, cool. And then I found out actually the whole thing was shot in Oregon, so I was like, oh, well, why couldn't you just shoot it in Maryland if it's supposed to be in Maryland as opposed to Oregon? My assumption would have to do with price of filming. That That's what I'm guessing. Or where people live. That could also be it. Locations were not secured before filming for this, so some of them actually ended up changing, apparently, which ended up meaning that some of the changes, there were some changes that were actually done to the script, really on the fly. Now, watching the film, I'm not sure, if you if you keep that in mind, I don't know if you'd really be able to pick up on much, much of anything not feeling like it fits, because everything feels like it fits. So when I found that information, I was kind of surprised, because everything seems intentional. It all seems like it flows, it goes together properly, and all that. I'm oh, sorry, my collar's a little messed up. Came from work. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, I was surprised. So the fact that they had to make changes on the fly, but it doesn't feel like that when you watch the film, excellent job. That just shows that they're re really good at adapting. Uh, a sequel was actually in the works. Uh, actually, I believe it was completely uh, finished by Glosserman, the script that is. Uh, but he abandoned it because he believed the script is too outdated now due to a bunch of trends that have happened within uh, horror. So basically, he wrote the script, finished it. By the time he got it done, he looked at the horror film pantheon, or what was going no, well, not pantheon, because that'd be the past. He looked at what was going on in horror films at that time, and he kind of looked at the script, and he was like, it's not current for what it should be if I'm releasing it in the current horror climate. So I would have to go back and update it. And from what I was reading, he's basically said, I don't feel like updating it. So there is not going to be a sequel, even though for years it was said, oh, there's going to be a sequel, there's going to be a sequel, because there was, because he was legitimately working on it. So I was pretty bummed to read that he basically just was just like, I quit. <laughs> um, to be honest, like, I think he should just make the film, though. Like, if he has the funding, if he can secure that funding, he should just make that film, no matter how outdated the script is, because people don't really care that much, especially if it's going to go straight to like video on demand or if it's going to end up with um just a blu-ray release whatever like it doesn't have to go theatrical just release it people will people will like it no matter what there are plenty of films that are done now that are supposed to feel like they're older that's a fine thing i feel like this is where maybe shutter should step in and approach glosserman and be like look we're streaming behind the mask we would we know a lot of people who are, who are very much interested in a sequel to this let's work together let's make this happen and just put it directly on shutter make it a shutter original let's do this no i don't know okay we'll find out let's do it i would like that okay so i like that they start with this with the particular scene that they do the main reason being that 
uh, being that the scene kind of gets piques your interest and you're kind of like, what's going on? This seems like a very typical kind of slasher-ish thing going on, which is obviously intentional. And then the cool thing is you get to see that scene later, not all that much later, but you get to see it later from a different angle. It's the same things happening, but you see a different side of what's going on. And I think that's a really cool way to open things up. Show it the one way, how it is as a normal kind of slasher, and then show the other side of it a little bit later when it's revealed what this is, which is a mockumentary style film. Uh, it's no big surprise with this film because it's in the synopsis that uh, it is... Um, a film that focuses on a mockumentary that's following a guy who's a serial killer who's basically trying to create a mythological killer, kind of like a Jason Voorhees, a Michael Myers, and so on and so on. So, um, mockumentary style, where they're following them. And you would wonder, you know, going into it, if you, before seeing this film or seeing any other films that are kind of mockumentary that are horror, which I don't really know of that many, put some comments down here, people, uh, if you know other mockumentary horror films, put it down there. I feel like mockumentary uh, within horror is kind of a bit close to found footage, but there's a big difference where I feel like the pacing is usually a lot better with the mockumentary because it's assumed that whoever's filming it is then editing it to put it together. And additionally, there's a lot more... Um, like less shaky cam and stuff like that because it's not someone like running around with a camera. Although in this, they do kind of run with a camera from or like here and there. But um, I, I just feel like overall for me personally, I like the mockumentary style more than the found footage. So, you know, just a little side tangent there. But, but yeah, so I like how they started out. The humor, I think, is at a pretty much perfect level. That's for the style of the film as well as the actual story of it. One of the things I like the most is that the person in this film who's playing Leslie Vernon, the guy who's supposed to be this mythological or supernatural killer, um, he's funny, he's quirky, and he doesn't at all, at least initially, seem sinister or menacing or dangerous at all. Like, he just seems like a fun, nice, quirky, energetic dude who makes a lot of jokes. And I think that really adds to the charm of this film because it like pulls you in kind of like it's pulling the people who are doing the documentary in to this false sense of uh, comfort in a sense because it, it makes you like you know who the guy is but through his actions and how he talks and jokes around and everything you start to not feel like that's who he is as it goes on which is this false sense of safety for the audience and people involved in the film so uh, I just like how they played that. They did a really good job with it. Plus, his character being like that is just funny because it's this juxtaposition of he's this hardcore, terrible killer who's trying to murder many, many people, but look how he is when he doesn't step into that persona, basically. He's just like this funny, fun-loving, uh, good guy. So it's weird. It's like, how do you reconcile these two things? Which, you know, with actual killers in real life, a lot of times they have two sides. You know, you'll... It'll be revealed who these people were, and then people will come out of the woodwork and be like, how is that even possible? The way I knew this person was, they were like this. Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, was a perfect example of that. He was considered to be like a pillar of his community, yet he was murdering a lot of people. Um, so you kind of always have that. So a lot of things in this film actually feel true to life, but even more importantly, they feel true to the slasher genre. Uh, touches on a bunch of like slasher commonalities, slasher tropes, slasher symbolism, and it rolls it in, but it also makes fun of it at the same time, and then also tries to twist it around as well, which is one of the things I really like about this film. I feel like for that reason, it's kind of inventive, it's new, it's kind of doing its own thing, and that's one of the things I like about this film. So uh, yeah, I um, already talked about that. These are the types of great what-if story ideas that true horror fans come up with. So I just feel like so many times when I'm watching a film, a horror film in particular, I'll start looking at the premise and the story and, and other what-if like scenarios will pop out of my head. And I'm like, well, what if I take this story and this happens instead? Or what if with this style of horror film, we, you know, someone did this because it's not been done before? Like this film feels like Scott Glosserman was watching a slasher and the script that you get for this is what was playing in his head. He was like, 
huh, you know, what if we did this? Or what if things were like this? And I just really like that because it feels horror fan-esque. You know, it feels like the film, the script, all of it is is, is from the heart of a true horror fan. And it, it just oozes of that. And that's one of the other things that I feel like gives it so much charm. And maybe why a lot of people do like it. Because I know a lot of people who do like it who have seen it. Um, so all the aspects of well-known slashers come up in this, like I was talking about, uh, and being seen from a different angle is actually very satisfying with that. Like I was saying, you know, it has the tropes, the symbolism, the commonalities of a lot of slasher films, but then it tries to do its own thing. But it's also looking at it from a different um, perspective. It's kind of more of what happens if um, these supernatural killers weren't actually supernatural but people believed them to be how would that get pulled off like what's the behind the scenes is why it's called behind the mask and it's just a cool fresh take on a film like this and it works really well and it's really fun uh, i've already talked about the personality mismatch uh there's some good commentary about the simplicity of causing fear uh in the past and how it gets more complicated over time basically so there's um there's a portion where they kind of reminisce, one of the characters reminisces about how, you know, these supernatural killers used to be, which really is just talking about horror in general, the horror genre in general, how it used to be, and how it used to be a lot more simplistic of stories and a lot easier to scare people and, and up the fear factor. And as time goes on, they're always coming up with new ways to do things and make it a lot more complicated. There's so much more planning involved, as they kind of say. Uh, and this, this person kind of opines for the olden days of just simple ratcheting up fear and doing it in a very easy, um, but kind of primal way. And I thought that was cool. That's a little bit of a commentary on the fact that people always feel like you have to keep like ratcheting and ratcheting and ratcheting up horror and changing it, which, you know, this character is basically saying, you don't really have to do it. Why can't we leave things the way they were? Some people like that. Some people don't, you know? So there's a mix of actually the documentary style or mockumentary style footage with actual kind of theatrical shooting, which when you think about the concept of putting those two things together in a film like this, it really shouldn't work, but it does work. It actually ends up being a little bit seamless. Like you do notice that the style of the camera changes, but within the story, it just fits and you just kind of go with it. It does work, which I think is a pretty good accomplishment, to be honest. Um, the film explain. okay, I already talked about the, the trap, the slasher tropes and symbolism, but what I didn't say about it is that it actually explains a lot. So if you're a person going into this film, watching behind the mask and you've watched a lot of slashers, but you don't sit there and really think about it, think about the symbolism and tropes and everything like that. This movie actually outright will talk about in interpretation of how you should watch a slasher film and break it down, which is kind of funny because it makes it a very meta film, so it's meta about itself. It's basically explaining itself, which is really weird. If any other film done in a different way would do that, it probably wouldn't work, and people would roll their eyes at it, but the way it's done here, it really works. Um, and then the last thing I have to say about it is that the end is great. Um, there, There's kind of twist-ish thing that happens that I think is really good, especially within the context of the story as it's been created and how it plays out. Um, so yeah, uh, I quite like this film. If you can't tell it, it, it is quite good. It's not, you know, a perfect film. It's not the best thing ever, but I really enjoy it. I think it's for its time for 2006, it's pretty groundbreaking for what it was doing. I know it wasn't super successful then, but I don't think it took a whole lot of time for it to kind of uh, build a cult following. Cause I feel like it does have that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put a comment down there, but okay. So uh, thinking about this, I'm between two numbers on this because I do my five star rating with half stars in play. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four star rating. I don't think I'm between a four and a four and a half, but I don't think it quite makes it to that four and a half mark. It is quite a good film, but it's not like four and a half quality. I'm gonna give it a four. Really good rating. I don't give a whole lot of those out. Fours to fives, I don't give a whole lot of it out. So, um, yeah, really recommend it. Catch it on Shutter Worlds there right now. 
Uh, anyway, if you could really help me out, just hit that subscribe. That's the big thing for me. I'm doing these things for free at the moment. Although if you do want to pay me for it, you can do that. Throw like $1 at me. Just check out my Patreon. You can just search Carlin Cook. Or you can do horror movie reviews with Carlin Cook. I'm on Patreon. There are some other tiers. But, you know, if you just want to throw $1 a month, that's awesome. It's not a whole lot. So, but I appreciate it. But the big thing is hit the subscribe. I really appreciate that. Also, put some comments down there. Let's talk about this film, other horror films. I love to interact with people about horror. Because I don't get to talk to that many people in my regular life about horror films. Because a lot of people kind of look at you weird. Or at least me. I don't know how you guys are. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.